The Decoy in Time Gallery presents the long history of decoy use in what is now the United States. In 1924, archaeologists from the University of California found a basket of 17 decoys in Lovelock Cave in Nevada. It is estimated that these decoys are about 2,000 years old. These decoys are made from the reeds of a plant called tulle and covered with seagull feathers, which indicates that the climate in Nevada was once very different from the environment there today. Few, if any, other artifacts remain of early decoy use in this country into the mid-1800s and the rise of market gunning, a period known as the Golden Age of Decoys. Prior to the passage of the Migratory Bird Act in 1918, huge numbers of birds were killed for meat and feathers to be exported to the cities. Duck was in high demand in the restaurant industry, and shorebird feathers were used to embellish ladies' hats. Following the change in the law in 1918, market gunning saw a decline but hunting for sustenance and recreation became more widespread. A hunter might need to use a great many decoys to attract a flock. Working decoys have upright heads to enable the hunter to quickly remove them from the water at the end of the day. As working decoys evolved, carvers found that hunters could carry more of them if the interiors were hollowed out to make them more lightweight. Decoys are just one element of hunting and trapping lifestyles. Boat designs and structures changed over time to conceal the hunter, ultimately producing more lucrative hunts. Dogs have had a role in hunting from its early days of existence. The Chesapeake Bay Retriever is one of the most common hunting dogs used in the Chesapeake Bay area. Gunning clubs are also important to hunting culture. As market hunting declined, gun club membership grew rapidly as wealthy hunters from all over the Mid-Atlantic region joined. These places became centers for sharing and learning about regional techniques and advances in technology. As the popularity of wildfowl hunting for sport increased, small factory operations, such as Mason's Decoy Factory in Detroit, Michigan, began to spring up. In the mid-20th century, mass-produced decoys of plastic and other materials were inexpensive and widely available, so the demand for handmade decoys fell. To continue their work, some decoy makers, like Lem and Steve Ward, turned their talents to creating decorative carvings. The Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art is a membership-based organization. To become a member, please visit the museum store. Mention the words Lem and Steve for discount on one item in the museum store. Mm -hmm.